Hey everyone, this is Damon here with PixNub Software, and for this video, I'm just going to be doing an extraction with um, green hair here. I'm going to actually do this in two parts. I'm going to do a quick extraction where I briefly discuss it, and then I'm going to really dive in and step by step talk about the easy green screen layers as well as some different techniques. So before we get started here, when you're doing an image like this, it's always best to set your expectations. And what I mean by that is take a look at your image and in particular zoom in to um, zoom into your hair here and just see what kind of detail you have to work with. And that way you can expect or, or know what best case is that you can expect. Because um, you're not going to get more detail out of the image than was in the original image to begin with. If you see some of these hairs here, we really cannot make out single strands of hair. And if we sample color in here to where we think there's probably some hair in here and look at that color. And then sample other areas where we think it's just screen. I'm you know, taking a few samples here. I'm not seeing much difference. And it, this hair is just kind of mashed into the green. So with that in mind, that kind of gives me an idea of what I can realistically expect the edges to look like in this extraction. So I'm just going to do a quick extraction and show you the best technique I would use for this particular image. And then again, I'm going to go in more detail after that. So I'm just going to do a single mask extraction. I'm not going to worry about dual mask for this because the edge Edges of the hairs are going to get redone anyway. So you can see these hairs were partially extracted. Uh, the first thing to try is going to this key and uh, mask settings and just turn up the foreground recovery. Now you see that it recovered most of the hair. The edges are pretty hard. This, this slider will actually make pretty hard edges the higher you turn it up. Um, it's really not meant for hair and in dual mask this does not even affect the hair region because typically you don't have green hair you're dealing with um, but we're using it in single mask for hair here and so it, it is making a pretty hard edge no big deal let's just hit apply and at this point I'm done with easy green screen and I'm going to do the touch-ups in these layers that it created so don't think when you hit the apply button on easy green screen that there's nothing that can be done because the program was designed with these layers just for the cases where you need to touch things up. And so that's the advantage of easy green screen over pretty much any other green screen software out there. And so at this point, um, I'm going to clean up the edges first to make them a little bit softer and blend a little bit better. I'm going to use the um, Select and Mask. You can either do that from your layer or you can just hit Select and Mask in the Easy Green Screen panel. It's going to do the same thing. So just make sure your Smart Radius is checked. I'm going to move this up to around 50 or so. And it's just going to go around all these edges and um, <clears throat> try to feather and blend those. You can also use your Smart Radius brush here and then brush around the edges if you just want to do specific edges. But often this smart radius works okay by itself. Um, you just have to play around with the times where you need this, where, where sometimes this can affect areas you don't want. But in any case, it looks good for this image. I'm just going to hit OK. So let's um, actually look at this against the background color. I think a darker gray will sh show the color a little bit better, so let's use that. And so now um, the edges don't look too bad, but we need to fix the color of this hair because easy green screen, it shifted the color of the hair because the hair was green. So it thought that that was spill and it needed to fix this spill. So it applied spill correction. So the spill correction is in two layers. And for this technique, I'm just going to turn off this desaturate green layer. I'm going to discuss these layers more in depth, but just for now, I'm not even going to use this layer. It's not needed. All the spill correction is going to be done in this bottom spill correction layer. So I'm just going to um, click on this mask. And by clicking on that, we can paint right in this mask. I'm going to grab a black brush. Let's go fairly soft here on this. And then I'm going to just paint 
where I don't want spill correction. Now I'm painting in the mask itself, so I'm painting black into that layer mask. And wherever I paint, it's removing spill correction. Okay, so not too bad. We've still got spill correction on the top that we want. No spill correction around the edges, which we're going to touch that up even a little bit more. But first I want to um, take a look at the top where we want spill correction and show you if we um, hide this layer. We've got that nast nasty green spill on top, but with this layer we're still correcting that spill there, and but we're not correcting it where we painted in that mask. You can also turn up the um, spill correction opacity if you want to. So in this case I think I actually like it a little bit higher and it gives pretty much perfect spill correction there. Okay, so the next thing, let's actually stay zoomed in here for this. Now we got the green hair back, but the edges are too chroma green. I mean, the, the hair itself was not as much of a chroma green as the screen, and we can really still see that here. So what I want to do is use this um, one that's called paint-color blend. This is usually the layer where you'd want to manually touch up color. There's two layers and I'll discuss both of these when I'm done, but this layer here is the one you most often use. So I'm going to grab a brush. Actually first make sure your, your sample tool is not set to point. Set to 3x3 or 5x5 is usually good. But I'm going to grab the brush and hit the Alt key on Windows or Option key on Mac and then I can sample a color of the hair. And that puts that into your um, foreground swatch. And if you see that puts it in the background swatch, you got to go into your color panel and make sure that you have the foreground highlighted and not the color, or not the, not the background. Because if, if your background is highlighted, it's going to actually replace the color in the background swatch, which you don't want. So by default, it should be the foreground, though. So once we have that, we can just paint. And watch what happens when I paint this color. We are now fixing the edge color and blending it more to the color of the hair. And also you can change the opacity of this layer. So if we turn it down to zero, you see it has no effect. 100 is full effect. I think around 75 for this image should be pretty good. Then you can just go around the entire image and sample colors that are near where you want the hair to be. And you see that we're really just fine tuning the color of these edge hairs. That looks much better than having that bright chroma um, color on the edge. I'm not going to be too picky for this because it's just a tutorial video, but with your own images of course you'd be a little more careful. Alright, so the last thing I may want to do is remove some of these edge hairs. If because remember when we zoomed in and there really wasn't a lot of detail? <clears throat> well, sometimes it's best just to try to remove that from the extraction. So you can use these contract mask buttons, and this will actually just contract this entire mask by one or two pixels. So watch the edge. I'm going to actually zoom in here. Let's take a look at this so you can better see what happens. When I hit this contract, now watch these edges here. See it just kind of pulls everything in a bit. So let me go again on that. Might have been a little much running that twice. I can always control Z to undo that. But you see that that just kind of defringed all of the edges. The last thing you may want to do is just paint off some of these strands of hair. So if you click on your mask, no, hit escape, I don't want that. Not exactly sure what I did there. Nonetheless, if you just click on your mask, so you're in your mask, um, and then you can just grab a black paintbrush, use a 50% opacity, and then you can just brush off, because if you're painting black in your mask, you are erasing um, part of your image, or you're masking out part of your image. Anyway, that's about all there is to this, um, but now I'm going to break this down a little bit more and really dive into these layers. 
as well as there's a couple other masking techniques that I will show you as well because there's different situations that may arise where you may need a different masking technique. So I'm going to um, go back. Let's go back to the original green screen image just so I can talk about these layers. So Easy Green Screen is different than most plugins, actually different than all plugins and standalone software for that matter. What you're going to get with really any other um, green screen software is you're going to get this single layer with transparency applied and spill correction applied. So at this point, if you only had a single layer and you needed to fix something, there's really not a whole lot you can do. You're kind of stuck. But Easy Green Screen is different because it gives you all these layers that are non-destructive. And what I mean by non-destructive, if I turn these layers off and I disable the mask, right now we are looking at this foreground image with no mask applied and no adjustment layers applied. And so, as you can see, it's the original image. Easy Green Screen does not do anything to that original layer. It adds a mask and it adds layers above it, but that original layer is untouched. So you have full capability to correct anything that was extracted or any color that was shifted. You can fix all of that with these layers. So let me reapply this mask here. And the next layer is the regular spill correction, and this does the bulk of the spill correction. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And then the next thing is the desaturate green. You see if I check this, not a whole lot happens. This is the desaturate greens is just meant to fix any spill that this spill correction layer did not fix. So that's why I say it's usually not needed. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute, but um, you know what I want to do actually? I'm going to zoom in here. I want to think this will help you see this a little bit better. I'm actually going to turn this spill correction opacity up and just try to make it really perfect here. Okay, so I've turned off this desaturate green. We're looking at just the regular spill correction layer. Now I'm going to turn this off and turn on the desaturate green layer. And if you watch, you know, any YouTube videos where you see Photoshop green screen extractions, what you often see is the spill correction technique shown is to desaturate the greens by coming in here to greens and then just desaturating and maybe changing the handles. But that's the technique that's most often taught. Now that's really not a great technique because as you can see here, it's turned those hairs into a gray scale. So it's, it's removing green, but it's turning it gray, which is really not what you want. You want hair color. But you can see as soon as I turn on the spill correction layer, it's got that color back. And this is the layer on top is only going to turn gray what was left behind where this layer didn't pick up. Hope that makes sense. <clears throat> and a little bit more about how this layer works. We've gone this far, I might as well really dive into these layers and explain them. So if you ever want to know exactly what's going on, just watch this video again and it'll show you how these layers work. I'm going to release a clipping mask on this. Um, set the color blend mode. I'm going to set that to normal with the opacity of 100. I'm going to turn the mask off. So this is the spill correction layer. And if you are um, familiar with green screen lighting with a magenta hair light to counteract spill, well this layer sort of works like a magenta hair light will. It blends in magenta and I guess magenta-ish colors. Um, the colors do vary across your image. There was actually a lot of research and development I did on how to create this color map, but it's blending this color map into your image to remove spill. And it blends that using color blend mode. So let's <clears throat> turn this to color blend mode. And then it's going to set a particular opacity it wants for how much spill correction to blend. Now you can see right now 
It's um, not looking like what we want, but we're not there yet. It's also going to clip that to your foreground, so it's only affecting areas of your foreground and not your background. And the last important thing it does is it sets where this is being applied by a layer mask. So if you alt click and let's go into this, any areas that are pure white get the full effect of the spill correction. Any areas that are black get no effect of it. And so we disable this mask again. That's with the mask disabled, but as soon as that mask is enabled, you can see that um, the spill correction looks normal for what it should look like. And that's important because we have this mask to work with. Because you remember in that last technique, I painted in this mask black. Well, all that's doing, if you look in our mask here, anywhere we paint black, we are removing spill correction from those areas. So pretty cool, we've got full control over that spill correction. And with this particular technique that I showed, oops, I um, yeah, it's not what I wanted to do. So be careful you're not brushing in the layer itself. Make sure you're always brushing inside of the uh, mask. Okay, so again, we are painting off spill correction anywhere we paint in there. Let me reclip the rest of these layers because they got unclipped when I unclipped the spill correction. Okay, so for the next layer, this is that desaturated greens. You see what happens when I click this on? It um desaturates greens that are within that range. Oh, I did it again. I'm I clicked in, I or I drugged the mouse over and so let me undo that here. So in any case, with this desaturating green on. If you wanted to use this layer and recover your green spill, you would actually have to go in into that mask and paint that off too. But like I said, that this top one is really not needed very often anyway. It's just as easy to uncheck that. Okay, and that brings us to the paint layers. Now we already discussed this a little bit. I'm going to discuss both of these here and the differences. So by default, both of these are set to 50% blend. They're also clipped to the um, foreground, so you cannot paint outside the lines. Um, the difference between these two is one is in color blend mode, and the other is in normal blend mode. So let's zoom in and just um, use both of them so we can see the difference. <laughs> let's, let's set this um, color to something that is going to show up well, like in bright red. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set these both to 100% opacity as well. So if we paint inside this first layer here, you can see that we are forcing the color. We can go over the edges, but um, and, and not affect anything outside because it's clipped. That's what this little arrow down is. It means it's clipped to the layer below, and it if you have consecutive clip layers, they're all clipped to this foreground layer. The paint normal blend mode, see when I paint here, it's just a solid color. Now you would never use this at 100%, and typically this color blend is what you use most of the time anyway, but with this um, normal blend mode, you would never use this at 100. You'd usually dial that back. And the same thing with the color blend mode too. But that is the difference between those two. And then again, you wouldn't paint red, of course. You would go in and you would alt and select a color that you want to make it and just paint that color in to match your surrounding hair color. And that way you can really fine tune the color of these edges. And again, I didn't refine the mask first, and that's a good point too. There's no exact order that you have to do all these steps in a lot of times. I'm just being real quick here and not putting a lot of 
care into being perfect, but um, you see these edges are still pretty choppy because when I went back and went back to the easy green screen, I undid everything we did. But you can do the hair color first, and then you can always go back in and run your selected mask again, either from here or from here. And then I'm going to apply my smart radius on here. And then you see it instantly applies that to this mask, but it keeps all of your color correction. All right, so a couple more techniques I'm going to show you that you may need to use. Let's go. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-extract this. All right, so there may be a case where this foreground recovery doesn't do anything. So if you turn it up to 100 and you don't see this being corrected, now that'll happen if um, the color of whatever you're trying to recover is too close to the color of the green screen or if it's actually more of a chroma green than your screen, then this foreground recovery won't recover that at that point. But no problem, just apply your image. And then what you can do is you can actually go into your foreground mask and you can paint white in that mask. And you can also, I'm going to show you a cool little technique. So if you alt and then click on your mask or option click on Mac to go into your mask, it'll be a little easier to see it. If you have areas that are gray, you know, uh, but not black to where they're partial transparent, a cool technique is to grab your dodge tool and set it to highlights. I'm going to use an exposure around 50, that should work, but you can dodge those areas and you can paint right over the edges while you're dodging. And if you're using a mouse, you'll have to click down each time you go over it because it'll be a point where it's going to want to start over where you've hit the max for one, where one mouse click will affect it. Actually, I take that back. In this version of CC 2019, it seems like they've... Um, change how that works. In any case, <clears throat> you can dodge it, you can go over the edges, and it's not going to affect the areas outside of those edges because if you're dodging highlights, it's not going to affect the black areas of your mask. And then at that point, of course, you could run into your selected mask and do this whole procedure over that we just did a few times, so I'm not going to redo all of that. Okay, the next thing is, let's say, for example, you had a mask and you just said, this mask is too messed up, there's too much manual touch-up stuff, and you have a better technique that you want to use to create a mask. It's still very advantageous to run easy green screen first and then make your mask in Photoshop as you would make it because you have all of these spill correction layers. So I'm just going to demonstrate here. We've got the original. You've got a copy of the original image that easy green screen keeps just for these type of situations. So if I click the original here, this is a copy of the original image. And let's say I wanted to do a color range mask. So if I go to select color range, I'm just going to make a mask in Photoshop. Now I've already done this once, so it, it's already shown me what I want, but when you start, you're going to have to click on your screen, and then you may have to hit the shift key and plus and click a couple more times to get your selection where you want. And also, if it's um, white on the background, black on the foreground, make sure you click this invert button so you have white foreground, black background. Let's hit OK. That's just making a selection. At this point, we can create a mask with this little button down here. Let's actually look at this against the color so we can see this better. So this is a color range um, mask. And I <clears throat> could have went in and set up the um, tolerance, or what do they call that here, <clears throat> the um, fuzziness. If you set this fuzziness up, you could feather those edges a little bit better. It used the default of 40 when I did that, <clears throat> but no big deal. I mean, you can see that it, it made us a basic mask, but it's kind of rough around the edges, but no problem because um, what I mentioned before is that you can create your mat, or it's, it's advantageous to run easy green screen first, and if you want to make your own mask, because you can blend these two together. So 
Um, what you can do is take this mask from the foreground layer and just simply throw that in the trash. Let's delete that. Then you can take this mask that you just made and drag that down to the foreground layer. And let's hide this original. So now what we have is this mask was created by us in the color range tool. And of course you could use any selection method you want in this original layer and then put that mask here. So now we have our custom mask here, but we've still got those spill correction layers and those manual paint layers to work with. So now of course we could go in and select a mask. It remembers what I did last time. And then we'd go into our spill correction layer, into the mask. Oh, first we got to uncheck this. Remember, uncheck that desaturate green. Oh, I'm on the dodge tool. Okay, so now that we're on the brush tool like we need to be, of course, we can go in and undo that. So we've got the green color back. And then we could go into our manual paint blending fine-tune this get rid of some of that harsh chroma green and then we could maybe contract the mask by a couple maybe go in and paint off some stuff we don't want anyway you get the picture um, it's actually not too bad once you get used to working with these layers and understanding them there's really nothing that you cannot correct um, as long as you have something you know where you can kind of see what you're working with and the hair has got some kind of separation from the screen I mean you can usually get a pretty decent extraction and I'll point out too that I probably talked for 20 minutes but this technique, I timed it before recording this video. I did this in less than 90 seconds. So just because I talked a lot here doesn't mean this is going to take you a long time. You can fix most images in under a couple minutes. So anyway, I hope you learned something. And you, I do suggest maybe watching this video a few times um, because there's a lot to absorb. But it's always best, like I say, to understand these layers and instead of just trying to memorize a technique step by step and following what I do step by step, every image may be different, but if you understand these layers and how they work, you can easily adapt your workflow to each image. And after doing, you know, 10 or 20, it becomes really easy to spot exactly what you need to fix in each image, and it becomes very, very quick. So thanks for watching, and if you're interested at all in Easy Green Screen, please be sure to visit our website. That is picksnub.com.